Bye social media etiquette or social media manners. Thank you for coming back if you're watching this and if you're new, welcome. Thank you for giving it a chance and clicking to view it. It's a Saturday and it's one of those cold winter weekends and I don't even feel like getting out of the house so I thought why not have a long chat about the social media etiquettes that I avoid or follow. I think um, just as social etiquette dictates how we behave in the real world, social media etiquette revolves around how we interact with people online and because we are interacting more with people online than in the real world. I think it's equally important. Uh, I think he also wants to be in the video. I think like social media etiquette is equally important. And because I've heard like so many people say things like how they wish people wouldn't, you know, do certain things online, I thought it would be nice to have a discussion on certain things we could agree on so we avoid putting ourselves and others in awkward situations. So let's just get on with our list, shall we? Mm. Number one on my list is, um, I'm just going to put him there. I think he just wants to be with me. Back to the list. Let's start with something controversial. Number one, don't post a group picture in which only you look good. Now I see this quite often in Explore and in my feed. You see a group picture and then you notice that the person who actually posted it looks amazing but it isn't the best picture of all of his or her friends. You know, all of us have some insecurities and if one of your friends is silently struggling with self-esteem issues, it doesn't help that you have put one of their not-so-great pictures online for the world to see. It always does not have to be about you and me, you know, so be kind. And ask for permission before you put someone's picture online or tag them. I think that's basic courtesy. Further to the first, number two on the list is don't take pictures and put it online when you're invited to someone's house. I think it happens in most cases when we are invited to rich people's house. For some reason, people get tempted to take pictures in front of their fancy cars and nice houses and put it on their like feet. What have we achieved other than infringement of the person's privacy and most importantly a risk to their security and safety? I think you should not even put pictures of your own place even if it's just an apartment for the same reason, let alone other people's properties, you know? So, number three on my list is oversharing private and intimate moments from personal life on social media. That selfie with your partner in bed, that drunk video from a party, you get the point, right? Nothing is ever deleted from the internet once we have shared it online, even if we delete it from our own page. You never know how many other sites must have already reserved it because of the engagement it got, right? So imagine pictures and compromising poses and situations being recycled. I strictly abide by the rule of not sharing information about your sex life, income and next plan with others. Better safe than sorry, right? And number four is don't engage in online arguments. Even if you are right, by giving your share of opinions, you wouldn't be able to change a person's stance. So it's just a waste of energy, you know? And when we consistently engage in online arguments, I feel like we tend to become very negative. And you don't want to like be all around that energy. It's not worth it. Yeah. And number five, and it's this uh, pain point for me, is the response time for instant messaging platforms like WhatsApp, Messenger, and others. Like, how long is it okay not to reply and within how many hours should you reply, right? Well, there is no set rules about within how many hours you are expected to reply or it's okay to get back. There is this whole perception around instant messaging being the immediate means to reach out to people and get back an answer and this whole contradiction 
has resulted in people feeling rejected when people don't get back to them within an hour or so, right? I'm at a phase in my life where there's so many things going on. I'm not saying it from a place of pride that I'm like the busiest person, but yes, you do reach a point in life where you get caught up with things and you have to be very careful with every choice you make, especially in terms of time investment. And you reach a point where chatting and checking messages is not one of your priorities. And I go hours and sometimes days without checking my messages, which is why I personally prefer people calling me if it's something urgent, you know? And I have met so many people in the same boat and who have lost people because they couldn't get back to them immediately, you know? So in this case, I personally feel like a window of 24 hours working hours even for messages just like business emails is okay to get back to people what do you guys think i think that's something i've always wondered but in my case i have made my boundaries with people i know like clearly that i will get back to you within 24 working hours yeah if it's something important call me <laughs> yeah Anyway, so that brings me to my list of five social media manners that I avoid or that I follow in order to save myself and others being put in awkward situations. Yeah, thank you for watching everyone and I shall see you guys in my next video. Ta-da!